Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and uh, thanks for joining me today. A couple of quick housekeeping notes before this video starts. Um, you may have seen a video that was called the Weekend Roundup. Uh, if not, there's a link right here that you can click on somewhere on the side up here, also in the show notes to that video. That is the type of video that I make every weekend for people who are in the environmental damage uh, level of support. If you don't know what that is, it's just like a little paid membership. Um, it's a little bit like a thank you and I make some extra videos for those people every week. Um, also that if you have interest in that, there's an Abraham Lincoln icon at the end of the video that you can click on and then you can go ahead and, and look and see what that's all about. So some of you enjoyed that video. If you like videos like that, then consider joining. All right. So this video here is about riffing on, uh, a couple of things that are concepts that I got from you guys talking about. Gold and silver and stacking and collecting and, and where that interchange takes place. Um, MN says, uh, being fairly new to collecting coins, I ask if the falling price of silver affects older coins for the same way that it does newer coins, i.e. bullion. For example, does an 1800s Morgan CD Liberty Barber take a hit as bad as modern silver eagles, maple leaves, and kangaroos, etc.? My collecting style is I buy what I like, which seems to be the much older coins with a long-term goal. Uh, and to help hopefully pass down through the family one day. Not at all for the quick flip or to make a buck. However, I don't have a rich wallet, so my risk appetite for buying a very expensive rare coin is not quite up there with the seasoned collector and the professionals. Well, great comments uh, and lots of fun things to point out here. MN, thank you for, for, for writing in. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, you're on a good path. Uh, and what I mean by that is don't don't go buy rare coins yet if you're not ready for it. Wait out into the into the tide pool a little bit before you get into the deep end and uh, take your time and enjoy it. Uh, as far as the silver market and coins go, uh, this market in particular that we're in is a little bit different than some of that we've seen in the past because we have a very, very much so a disconnect between the price of silver and the price of physical metals. In other words, um, right now with silver under 20 bucks, um, three years ago, and in, in, uh, in 1919, because that was three years ago, Ben, in 2019, at this time with silver kind of in a similar price point, you would have seen uh, silver um, peace dollars, for example, trading at $15, $16, $17, and now they are $25 to $30. And that, that has to do with a lot of different things in the market that are different than they were tr traditionally or historically. Same thing is true with 90% silver coin. Traditionally, you could have bought that stuff at melt or maybe just a fraction over melt, and now you're seeing seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve dollars over melt for that type of stuff. So that that I don't think is a forever thing though, by the way. I think that eventually that gets washed out. I think that eventually you'll see those numbers kind of settle back closer to um, to bullion silver spot levels. Okay. So that is not a forever thing. And to answer your question, traditionally, yeah, I mean, a lot of coins that are like Morgan dollars or Peace dollars or Barber coinage that are low grade tend to move with the tide of the price of silver. Now, silver, uh, the silver market, the gold market, and the coin market all have this really interesting parallel, which they don't always move exact in exact synchronicity, but they move, they tend to move in the same direction, right? So when metals go up, a lot of the coin market tends to go up. But of course, if the silver prices really spike, because that's what we're talking about mostly silver here, of course, you have to see the bottom of the market come out. So if silver goes from 20 to 40, like it did in 2013, you know, all of a sudden, well, your silver dollars melt at, uh, you know, I should have done math ahead of time, 30, 30 plus dollars. You'll see things that start to come up in value because the bottom half of the market has to come up because the melt value has gone up. That's just going to happen with an intrinsic thing, you know, so... Um, it's, it's a fun area to collect and yes, those, those two things are related and they will move together. But for example, like silver, silver, um, seated Liberty dollars was one of the things you mentioned that market doesn't really change with the price of silver and gold doesn't really affect it much. Um, one time we had a, a high relief, um, $20 gold piece, which is like a $20,000 coin at the time. And, uh, we were doing a deal with a guy and the price of gold dropped $50 the next day. And so we were joking that we should take $50 off the price of the coin. But, but you know, there's certain things that if they're more collectible, like you mentioned, you know, the more expensive coins, the more expensive it is, the less likely it is connected to the actual price of silver. Um, 
And uh, Jim, also known as Jim, uh, Hawkins also writes in with a similar comment, something about tattoos and hairdos, but we'll ignore that part. Uh, the best part about being an actual coin collector instead of a gold or silver investor is, who cares what gold and silver are at? We collect coins for the pure enjoyment and the rarity. So this is this is a great comment that kind of ties into what we're talking about. Um, you know, if you're collecting for the fun of it and you enjoy it, you know, there will be that point at which you start diving deeper and deeper. So if you're a new collector, don't worry about buying rare and expensive coins. Just start with what's in front of you, right? But eventually, as you get more seasoned, you'll start you start varying off. But but a lot of that is your confidence comes up higher and higher the more you collect and the longer you do it. And so you'll be confident enough to purchase more expensive coins. And it doesn't matter what the gold and silver market are doing, right? So um, in the last 25 years, I've seen silver go from $4 to $40 and back down to 18 right? And that whole time, coin collectors who've been buying coins that they enjoy buying as a collectible, they're doing just fine, right? And they've had to pay more for some coins. The coin market's done the same thing, by the way. You've seen price points on certain coins go up and down over time. But that's okay because you're buying for the enjoyment, enjoyment of the hobby. And uh, I want to tie this all together with one last thought, which is, um, you know, at the Vegas show that I was at, there was a whole bunch of IG, Instagram, silver stackers, guys that had a lot of this stuff. And uh, truthfully, truthfully, um, you know, silver buyers and all this silver movement is a, in my opinion, a gateway drug into coin collecting. And uh, to go back to NM's question or MN's question, um, or comment I had another guy call me and he was looking at buying an ancient coin and it was inexpensive it was like a $300 denarii and I looked at that and I thought well you know that's that's really you know a pretty expensive coin and he asked me does this vary with the price of silver and at first I thought he was pulling my pulling my leg but then I thought you know what no this guy is actually being quite sincere in his question because he's just new he's novice right and that's okay but he is a silver stacker who happened to find the channel and got interested by seeing some coins on ancients and he likes history to buy something new, right? So all of this stuff is kind of tied together. Um, the silver market and the gold market and the coin market and, and, but, but at the end of the day, when you see, I'm laughing at myself cause I said, but at the end of the day. And so if nothing else in this video, maybe come up with some new phrases that I can use. Thank you. So really what we're talking about here is that with the, with the fluctuations of the silver market and the gold market, go ahead and enjoy collecting coins and buying coins uh, and enjoy the hobby aspect of it. And it's okay if you're new, it's okay to be novice, and it's okay to learn along the way. And uh, no, not all coins are related to the price of silver, but certain ones do kind of fluctuate with it. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.